Hey guys, Chris at Rockford Ordnance coming to you today with just a great rifle. Um, I'm sure some of you guys have seen these before. Um, I like it. I mean, it's Chinese, but uh, I'm kind of reaching out asking for some help. I want to switch this thing up, get rid of this ugly Bakelite and I, I can't quite figure out how to get rid of this stupid folding stock so I figured I'd just drill out the pin and get rid of the stock and then probably just take my Dremel and hack off this hinge thing here and I'm hoping I can like put on I don't know like an M4 stock and adapter because I really want to use this minimalist and then uh, I've got one of those uh, cheapy quad rails I'm going to put up here and get some Tapco mags and I don't know I thought flashlight laser some other stuff and uh, make this a real rifle something you know bam 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 we can use alright <laughs> I'm kidding now you can all stop having your heart attacks um, this is the pride and joy of my collection um, this is a Type 56, um, I believe they call it a 56-2, um, yeah, it's a pre-ban Chicom Norinco Type 56 import with the full Bakelite and folding stock. Uh, pretty rare gun not many of these were imported and uh, well my dad was the original owner he bought this sucker for I want to say it was like 199 bucks 299 bucks I think it even came with a crate of uh, Chinese copper washed ammo when he bought it I think they were probably trying to get rid of him him and his partner uh, bought a matching ones and he shot it I, I bet he didn't even put a mag through it and you know it was just to say he had an AK and he put it away and there it sat in the safe all these years and when I really started getting into AKs um, he started talking about giving it to me and uh, one day I showed up at the house and he said I got something for you and here it is I'll tell you another funny story about it some years ago when I first got into AKs you know he pulled this out and he said oh you know what I really need I need one of those bake something mags for it and I just kinda said yeah that'd be kinda cool well one day I'm at a gun show Keep in mind, I know nothing about AKs at the time, nothing. And I see a Bakelite mag, and I reach on the guy's table, I grab it, and I'm looking at it, and I say, hey, how much you want for this? And he said, ah, I don't know, give me 15 bucks. And I said, well, how's 10? He says, I'll take it. Think about that, guys. A Norinco marked Plant 66, Triangle 66 mag, 10 bucks. Um, anyways. I didn't know what it was. I just thought it was a Bakelite mag. Could have been a Tula, anything. I bought it. I gave it to him for Father's Day. Years later now when I'm into AKs and I figure out what this is and everything, I look at the mag and just by sheer luck, I had bought a Norinco Plant 66 mag. So it's the right mag by accident. Um, I have the original sling for it. I don't have it on the gun. I don't want it to wear any of the bluing and stuff like that. Um, I don't have the original box. At least I don't think so. It might be at his house. I'd have to look around. Um, I've added a few things. You know, this mag I had bought him. He did have and gave me the original uh, blued uh, mags that came with it. I think it was two or three. I uh, did manage to get my hands on a second Norinco mag. Actually, I think this one came from Misha. Uh, and I got my hands on an original Chinese Bakelite Norinco 
I don't know if it's Norinco. I don't think any of them said Norinco on them, but uh, it's the right bayonet for the gun, and it looks great on it too, guys. It's a little tight, and I don't like taking it on and off too much because I don't want to scratch the gun or anything, but it goes on. Just to give you an idea of what it looks like. Pretty cool, huh? The whole Bakelite setup. Anyhow, and then uh, one of the guys on the files had a bunch of oil bottles. I think this was two bucks or four bucks or something. A Chinese star oil bottle I thought was cool to go with it. Um, I'd like to find some kind of case, jump case or something. Uh, that when this thing's folded up it would fit in like a paratrooper case or something It'd be kind of cool So yeah, that's the story. That's how I got it. Um, it's been in the family since day one and I just love it. I do shoot it occasionally um, It's not a gun I take out all the time and you know do mag dumps with I'll bring it with occasionally and put a half a mag through it, a mag, whatever. I, none of my stuff is uh, are safe queens. I, you know, what's the point in owning something like this if you can't shoot it? It is in 100% perfect condition. I mean, these guns weren't perfect when they came over and the bluing's very thin on them, but it is pretty. Um, they all have little handling marks here and there, but there's no scratches put on it by us. Uh, the other thing is it's really unmarked. There's really no import mark other than up on the barrel here, hardly readable, says Norinco and a couple letters from some company. I forget what it is. AICS maybe something if I remember right. So that's kind of cool. There's no billboard down the side of it or anything. The only thing is the the Triangle 66 and 56S. That's what it was. A 56S two or B or something. But uh, here's the side of the receiver. And you can see there's no marks. Um, everything is just really, really nice. Uh, you can hardly see, you know, the stamp up here. Um, original slant break, everything. Here's the other side. They had polished bolts. Um, just trying to get you so you can see everything here in detail. I'll put some pictures too, some high definition pictures. One of the really cool things about these rifles, and I didn't even know this till a few months ago, is there is a cleaning kit built right into here. And how that works is you take a bullet, yeah, right here. Take the tip of a bullet or a punch and you push in on this little pin that's in there and it's spring loaded, it pops out and it's like a little cartridge, it's like a magazine almost. And it's got all your cleaning stuff in there, a jag and a brush and other stuff. Really, really neat. Um, I'll say this stuff, well, it is Bakelite because you can see the lines of the filler and stuff in the handguard uh, and in the grip a little. Um, I've seen some guys where these crack. Um, this is holding up really, really well. Um, but I keep everything oiled up and it's in a controlled safe and the whole nine yards, you know. Um, as far as wear on the gun, I mean, like I said, it's had very few rounds. I would probably say under a hundred rounds through it. Um, and the condition shows. I mean, everything's in really good shape. I mean, look at the piston. <laughs> it's, let me see. It's, uh, you know, like it's never been fired. Look at the top of it. If you can see that. Um, here's the bottom of the carrier. And... I'll show you the bolt face too. Bolt faces. Things just perfect. So, anyhow, um, face of the hammer. Hammer looks to be a little softer than the carrier. 
I don't know if you can see a couple marks in it there. But, uh, yeah, there's hardly, there's no marks on the trunnion. Uh, some on the top rails here, a little rub from going back and forth. But, uh, for all intents and purposes, this gun's unfired. I mean, it's had so little over, how many years this thing came out in the 80s? Uh, I just love it. How does it shoot? It shoots, um, it's got a bit of kick to it for some reason. I'm thinking it's maybe a little over gassed, um, or maybe the stock being that the butt is so small and just steel. Um, I don't know. It's got a vented gas tube. Um, I'm not saying it's bad by any sense. Um, I mean, 7.62 is 7.62, but uh, it's a comfortable stock. It's not bad. Um, it, it's just got a bit more punch than most of my other ones. Um, the sight, front sight, I have it pushed over to the right a little bit. Uh, so it must be canted a little bit here, although I can't really see it. It almost looks like perhaps the rear sight block is off a little bit and yeah that might seem to be the case it's up against the right side here and there's a little gap on the left side but uh not bad i mean it's off to the right a little it's it's kind of off-putting when you shoot these chinese because they have the full hooded front sight and that hood gets in the way you know it's not like the rabbit ears on the other ones it's kind of uh, if this was any other gun, I'd probably open it up, uh, but don't worry, I'm not going to. Um, but yeah, it, it shoots just fine. These uh, Bakelite mags run just fine. Yes, I use them. Uh, it's just, it's pretty, it's different. Uh, you don't see too many of them, and it's mine. <laughs> um, I just like it. It's I pull it out once in a while and I thought, you know what, I'll show the guys, make a video of it. Um, believe it or not, these guns were not issued to any military. They were not issued uh, to the Chinese military or anybody else. Um, they were imported for U.S. Com consumers and that was about it. You know, maybe had things continued, they may have uh, done something with them, but uh, they never did. Um, there are some versions of these by by B West, and those are nowhere near as desirable as these. The, the you know, uh, if anybody's looked into any of the Chicom stuff, B West had some issues with some receivers, not all. But they had uh, some soft receivers, pins egging out, that kind of thing. And uh, there's a list out there of what people think are the good ones and the bad ones. But there's no definitive line, so to speak. Uh, you know, I think it, and don't quote me on this, but I think some that were built here, I want to say like Arizona or something, were the good ones or no those might have been those were the bad ones i think uh anyhow um yeah the b west just because of that issue that keeps coming up and nobody knows without shooting them uh you know do i have a good one or a bad one um it's probably better to steer clear of them I'm not going to say there's not good ones out there i don't want anybody saying oh you're knocking my gun i'm not knocking your gun um, it's just there's that that cloud that hangs over them a little bit um, it shoots great um, everything on it is smooth um, everything fits real well uh, 800 meter sights the barrel pin is nice and tight looks perfect rivets are stunning actually um, they are as perfect as perfect comes. I'll give Narinko this. They really put together nice, nice rifles and the bluing is, is gorgeous too. I mean, they actually polished these things. And when you look at it, it, it's like, if you don't have a blued AK, 
get one or build one or blue one or something because until you have one it's to me the epitome of what an AK should be and then add in Bakelite on it or some really nice wood wow how about a M70 with uh, with original Yugo bluing that's that's a gorgeous gun have have uh, two rivers build you one up or something I mean there's so many beautiful guns that would look great in blue I think Anyways, just a short video, show you my pride and joy. I know I always say my Yugos are my favorites, but this is by far my favorite rifle in my collection. Um, I'll always have it, I'll never get rid of it. Um, it was my dad's and that's special to me. Uh, we get out and shoot our AKs together and that's always cool. Uh, it, it's fun to get out with your dad and, and do something you both enjoy, you know. And he's getting up there a little bit, so he has a hard time sometimes. He can't shoot trap much anymore. So to go to the range and, uh, you know, put some targets out there and see what we can do, uh, it's fun. It's fun. So, um, yeah, oil bottle, matching bags, uh, bayonet, got the... Uh, the sling for it. I gotta get some mag pouches and maybe a, a chest rig would be cool. I would love a Chinese chest rig, but don't know enough about them and they seem to be getting expensive. Maybe if somebody has one they could spare, they could, uh, shoot me a note. I'd love to have one. Um, anyways, yeah, let me know what you think. I'll throw some pictures in here along the way, some close ups so you can admire it. Um, it's a gorgeous gun. If you have the opportunity, get one. You know, they're, they're not going away. They're not getting any cheaper. And uh, it's a conversation piece, that's for sure. So, instead of me babbling on and on and being redundant, guys, thanks again. We just hit 100 subscribers. I know it's not much, but it's a big deal. Um, 100 subscribers. I never thought I'd get that far in all the videos we got. And, comments and I'm having fun. You guys are, are a blast and uh, thanks for leaving me all the fun questions to answer and everything and if I can be of any help please let me know. Um, as always like and subscribe and Rockford Ordnance out.